Hi everybody, I hope you're well. Welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I created this photograph using the Magmod Magbox Pro 42, one speed light, and this little thing. So, let's crack on. So I'm here today at my good friend Neil Ridley studio and it is amazing. This is like a playground for photographers and I've come here without a real good sense of idea what I'm going to actually be doing but I love this space and I'm working today with the amazing Darsley who you may remember from this video that we did up on the wild and windy moors. So thank you very much for coming Darcy and we bought this amazing dress. This is just bought off Amazon but it looks really cool. I think it suits Darcy really well. So I'm going to try and go for like a classic, you think it's 20s, 20s look we think. So I'm going to start off very simple with just a, probably like a one light setup and then try, as I always try and do, and get a bit more creative. I really think that this background over here, which I didn't know was even here, so this is, we've only set foot in Neil's studio about 10 minutes ago, but I think, oh, this is really nice. So it's going to provide quite a dark background. So I'm going to start off simple, just shoot Darcy here, I would think. We'll just even do natural light. Then I'll introduce maybe the mag box and then we'll try and get a bit more creative. So I was going to move this chair. I love this chair, but we've also got this amazing sofa. Again, all this, I didn't even know it was even here. I'm going to be doing a few videos at Neil's studio today. If you want to find out more details, then there'll be a link in the description, but go and follow the studio on Instagram. It's going to become very popular, this space, I can tell. So Darcy, if I can bring you over here, please, into Studio A. I'm going to shoot probably the majority of these images on my Sony 85mm 1.8. I'm on my Sony A92. Perfect. I can always see because it's relatively dark here, which is a good thing for me because I do want to be introducing my own lighting. I'm at f1.8, ISO 2000, and my shutter speed is at 1 200, so it's relatively dark. I'm going to bring you a little bit further forward, Darcy, if that's okay. The reason I'm asking Darcy to come a little bit further forward is so that the separation between her and the background gets a little bit longer. That means that the background will just blur out a little bit more. Perfect. So as you can see here, natural light looks okay. There's nothing wrong with it as such. It's just not very exciting or dynamic. So let's now introduce some off-camera lighting. I'm going to do that by adding the Magmod Magbox 42. I can never say that. Now, I've said this many times before in my videos, but I love this softbox. The quality of light that comes out of it is absolutely amazing. We put on the mag shoe. The reason that the light quality is so good from this softbox is because it's a large light source. You always need to remember that the larger the light source, the softer the light will be. The other thing to bear in mind is that the closer the light source, the softer the light will be. So by having a big light source like this, close to Darcy, the light quality will be really nice. You're also seeing as well here just how quick this is to put up, which is the great thing about well, anything Magmod really, it's just also very quick and easy to use. If you're interested in this softbox, I have made a couple of videos all about this, which I will link to up here. When I first made a review of the Magbox Pro 42, I mean, that was well over a year ago now, and I'll link to that up here. People often said, what happens if this breaks? Like, oh, if, if this... You know, if the diffusion panel zip breaks or something, then can you replace it? And I remember thinking at the time, but what if anything breaks? I've been using this solidly every single wedding, I dare say. This comes with me. Every shoot I do, it is it's as good as the day I first got it. So don't let things like that worry you, would be my advice. The other great thing about the mag box is the option of this additional grid. So just as a traditional grid would do, that you used to, put, used to put in on your speed lights, this is going to just limit the spill of the light, which is important because I don't want the lights from this to be hitting the background. I'll position this here, just to about 45 degrees from Darcy, and I want it to be close. This shot for me is going to be more about waist up. So the closer I can get the mag box to Darcy, without it being in the frame, the better. So I'm going to put in a Godox AD200 into the mag ring, just like that, boom. And that is on channel A. 
So as always, I'm using my Godox X2T trigger. I love these triggers, they're so easy to use. Right, so because I'm going to be using off-camera flash, I'm going to change my settings. We now are not relying on needing a high ISO because I'm bringing in the light. It's going to drop my ISO to, from 2000 to 400. I'm going to stay at f1.8, and I'm going to stay at 1200 on my shutter speed. And because we're, it's a relatively low ambient environment that we're in, the speed light doesn't have to work very hard. So that means we don't need a very high flash power. So I'm going to guess at 164 power, and we'll just see what that gives us. Beautiful. Perfect. So you can see, even just before we even start getting into refining this image, it already, in my mind, looks much more dynamic and contrasty than the natural light shots. So if you can dance, I'm going to ask you just to say this way slight and then just looking back towards that light for me. And if you ever just to just play with your head, that's beautiful, stunning. Right, I'm going to drop my ISO from 400 to 200. That's really nice. That's good. This background looks so cool as well. It's not very bright, but it just gives us enough sense of what it is. They're amazing, Darcy, thank you. I'm going to introduce a second light. I think I'm going to backlight Darcy slightly, just to, just to give a bit of rim light to her. Oh, before we add this second light, I just forgot to mention, Flashmasters! Flashmasters, if you're not aware, is the biggest project that myself and my partner Helen have worked on this year, and we are so proud of what it is. But rather than me telling you now, I'm going to pass you over for a little quick 20 second video to explain more about Flashmasters and why we are so proud of it, and it's going to become one of the biggest things that I work on next year. We really hope you can join us. So here's a little bit more of an explanation of what Flashmasters is. Flashmasters recognizes and celebrates the best flash photography in the world. We are sponsored by some of the biggest names in the industry, such as Magmod, Studio Ninja, PicTime, Geekoto, Enphoto, and Imagine, and have some of the best flash photographers in the world as our ambassadors. Flashmasters celebrates flash photography in three ways, education, community, and awards. Education is massive to us. Within the Flashmasters member zone, we share full-length interviews with our ambassadors and award winners. We also share the behind-the-scenes details of how the best images were created. Community is at the heart of everything we do. By joining Flashmasters, you will become a member of an inclusive, worldwide community of photographers who all want to learn and support each other. Our members' Facebook group is a great place to ask questions and it's also where we host regular live streams for the community. We also love to chat about questions posed by our members on our weekly Flashmasters podcast. We are the only photography award site in the world dedicated to off-camera lighting. Flashmasters awards are open and transparent and are judged by some of the best off-camera flash photographers in the industry. Since Flashmasters launched in September 2022, We've been blown away by the standard of winning images. The talent in our community is incredible. To find out more and join us in the Flashmasters community, please visit us at flashmasters.co. So we're going to introduce a light behind Darcy now, just for a bit of rim light. So this is going to be speed light B, and I'm just going to pop a grid, a magma grid on there as well, because it's sort of the light spilling all over the place. I might potentially actually just try it on this side. Yeah, and just slightly looking, just facing that way a little bit, that's gorgeous, yeah. Really good. Perfect, thank you very much, Darcy. So, well, a couple of other things we're going to do. Firstly, I'm going to bring this sofa into play because it's really cool. And then we'll try, and we won't need the, uh, the Brexit cushion. <laughs> we'll put this over here. And then I'm going to use this. Some atmosphere aerosol, which is basically smoke in a can. This is where like, models are going to start to really make a difference, because if, if that was me trying to make this look elegant, it would look a mess. But yeah, Darcy makes it look really perfect. The light source is as close as I can get it without it being in the frame. Because, as we said earlier, the closer the light source, the softer the light will be. Not going to change any other settings just yet. Let's just see what this gives us. That's really nice. 
Right, so shall we try the smoke? Yes. <laughs> Excellent, so I'm going to put this camera on a stand if that's okay. Unfortunately, despite our best efforts, especially Helen's, the atmosphere aerosol just didn't produce enough smoke for what I wanted. I tried adding a speed light behind to backlight, but the smoke effect still wasn't very strong. As you can see in these RAWs, you can see the smoke, but it's very, very subtle. I then remembered that I did have some smoke pellets in my bag. Now, these are amazing, but they do produce a lot of smoke. And we're indoors. No, it, that just isn't that good. The reality is, a smoke pellet is, it would work. I think I'll just use a smoke pellet. But that is a... Per, oh, thank you, mate. It'll only be once, promise. <laughs> okay, so it didn't quite work. As you can see on the screen here, we can see the smoke, but it's very, very faded. And it would be nice, because of the, the, the dress, and we're trying to make this sort of like 1920s drinking club vibe. I don't think that's even a thing. <laughs> but um, the more smoke, the better. So I do have some very small smoke pellets, which we think that, that that's gonna, this is really gonna create smoke, but it will also create really epic images. And if we just get all of our settings right, then we just add the smoke, I think we're gonna come up with something really cool. So that's going to be the new plan. We'll see how it goes. This is a great thing about Neil Ridley Studio. We can. <laughs> <laughs> We've now got this little smoke pellet, which will run for about 30 seconds. We're going to be very safe with it. Put it in this mug so that no one will be touching this. Darcy will be stood here with this. This is sort of. What do you even call these? I don't know. This. <laughs> <laughs> but it, was, it will give the effect of smoking, but basically, I'm going to ask Helen to, to be doing this with the smoke, and then we do have flash B behind Darcy. Now, if you're ever going to backlight, and this applies to other things like rain as well, if you're ever going to backlight, look, I'm just chilling with a cup of tea here, when, especially with smoke, the effect of this will be far greater than you probably imagine. So because of that, I've got a feeling, actually we won't need the grid on, I've got a feeling that even at the lowest power, this will blow the smoke out, pardon the pun. The smoke will just go to white. So to, to take the edge off the power of the speed light, we're gonna use the Magmod ND times 8 ND filter. This is one that comes in the new, with part of the new gel set. I'm gonna put that on there, and it's gonna take all the sting out of the power of this speed light. Now, when we're actually shooting, because we're going to do this once, I may need to change my settings on the fly as we go, but my guess is that this at maybe 164 power will backlight the smoke and it will look really effective. Now, I'm going to make sure that I place this behind Darcy so I won't see the, the, the light. It's just to light the smoke a little bit. So we'll put that, actually we'll put it a bit lower, we'll put it about there where it was. I'm just going to take a shot now without, without any smoke, just to see what we get. Perfect. Everything looks good. I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to turn B up. I'm going to be risky. I'm going to go to 132 power. Yeah, I think this is going to look really effective. So I think it's time then. <laughs> we'll light the smoke pellets. Hopefully it'll look really cool. <laughs> I'm back by a starter. Oof. That's got it, that's got it, that's enough. Set the glass on fire. That's cool. Oh, it looks good. Just gonna turn up A, which is the lights hitting Darcy to 132 power. Thank you so much, firstly to Darcy for not minding us putting smoke all around her, to Neil for letting me use his amazing studio, say the link to Neil's studio is going to be in the description but it's an amazing place for photographers, go and check it out on his Instagram and get in touch if you'd like to do a shoot here, I will definitely be back because it is such a good space. And yeah, thank you to Helen for filming, thank you to Matt for filming. As always, if you have any questions at all about anything I've done in this video, please do let me know in the comments, I'll do my very best to answer. 
thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Thank you, Darcy. <laughs> Is this Downton Abbey you wear these clothes then? No? I was going to say you could star in Downton Abbey, but then I thought I have no idea what I'm talking about.